This is a diaphragm pump, and I thought we'd take it apart and see how it works. Um, I won't talk much about the motor. I've got another video on that already. By the way, these motors are really good generators. They've got big permanent magnets in them, and they're also just uh, fun motors to have around. So when the pump head fails, uh, these are good things to hang on to. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take this apart. We'll look and see how it works. And yeah, okay, next step is let's get to it. This is a view of the top of the pump. Um, this is the inlet. This water comes in here, comes out here. This hole right here normally has this uh, screw in front of it, and this is uh, this sets the pressure. So it's a spring-loaded valve. I take that out of there. You can see the spring, and yeah, it's a spring-loaded valve. And the tighter you put it in there, the more the pressure goes up. You know, until it reaches, of course, the maximum limits of the pump. Okay, so we need to remove these screws around the outside, and then we will see uh, the insides of the pump and go from there. The case on the head assembly has two main parts. It has this metal part and the plastic part. And if we pull it apart like this, um, the only interesting thing on the pump motor right here is the shaft it has a flat cut in it right there. Um, so we'll set this aside till later and then we'll bring this back and I can keep these screws from falling out. The flat joins up with this uh, part of the pump right there. You can see the flat moving around and there are again six screws, three of them long that drive down into the motor case and three short ones that just hold the top half of the case to the bottom half of the case. And let's separate these pieces. If I got all the there we go, a little suction. And there are the two main parts, the lower part and the upper. And then let's zoom in for some detail. The lower part of the case has three pistons, if you will. And they are driven by this uh, on the back. And this is, I don't know if you can see it, it's eccentric. It's not uh, centered, can you see that? Uh, and we will hook it onto the motor here in a second and I will show you what it does. And there's this platform and each of these pistons is hooked to one of these little platforms, which is in turn hooked to this, so that when this is held firmly in place and this is forced to rotate, these little pistons jump up and down. They don't move very much, but they move enough and they move fast enough that the total effect is that this pump will pump about two liters of water a minute at up to 80 PSI. I have this part of the bottom head with the pistons attached to the uh, motor again, and I've got it also connected to my power supply, and I've got it so that it'll run slowly. Now you can see what's happening is each one of these are taking turns of bobbing up and down, each one of these pistons. And I can kind of change perspective so you can see that. And normally this bottom plate is held down like this, and so you can see those pistons uh, bobbing up and down like that. And yeah, they're going back and forth like a normal piston would. Not very far, but uh, of course, now most of the time a piston's gonna be inside of a cylinder and it's gonna have an intake and an exhaust valve. And that is what this does. So you can see there's three chambers over here. Uh, we'll look at closer, but each one has an intake and an exhaust and each one of these pistons will be uh, going up and down inside one of these chambers. Okay, so let's uh, take a closer look at this side of it. So each of our three chambers has an intake, and this is a rubber valve, intake, intake, and an exhaust right there, there, and there, and the valve is on the other side. We'll show that in a second. Um, this is the inlet, so the water goes in this side over here, comes out over here, and there's uh, some plumbing on the back side, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, but yes, so when the piston goes down in one chamber, it, it creates a slight uh, vacuum. It pulls open this rubber valve, which I don't know if you can see, uh, pulls open that valve, exposes that inlet. Uh, then when the piston comes goes up, it forces water down there, uh, opening another rubber valve on the other side, and then of course uh, exhausting out of the port. If we look at the back side, we can see what's going on here a little easier. 
you can see this rubber piece right here is the back side of that rubber valve right there. This is the inlet for this chamber. This outlet goes to this rubber valve, which you can kind of see me peeling that up. So this is a big rubber valve for all three of the chambers. And then you just repeat that three times. So inlet for another one, inlet for another one. And again, this is the exhaust for all three. So this goes in here like this. And this is where the water is coming in. You can see the beige paper. You can see that. So there's an opening here and it floods this outer chamber. And this is where the water is coming from to go through this valve. You can see on the back side of here. So the water would go through here, force this valve open into the chamber. And then when the piston comes back up, it will squeeze the water out through here. And that's this center piece. And it will go into this uh, circular area right here. Now you can see the yellow piece of paper and that's the exhaust valve. So water comes in here into this chamber. It's pulled into the into the uh, cylinder if you want to call it that. And then when it is forced out of the cylinder it comes into this chamber and from this chamber it goes out of this yellow tube. The only thing we're missing now to complete this is that center hole. You can see the center hole there, the light through there. And normally this uh, valve we talked about earlier is on the back side of there pushing in and this will limit the pressure. Uh, if the pressure gets too high what will happen is it will leak backward. You can see a little pipe right there. Uh, it will leak backward into this outer chamber uh, but otherwise the water flows from here into this and then it's forced into this circular area and then it goes out where the yellow paper is out, the, uh, out this side over here. Just for a bit of craziness, let's try to uh, put this in place and run the motor at, at the actual rate of 32 volts. Normally this outer housing would hold this in place, but let me try to use my hand and I'll put 911 on my speed dial. Um, here we go. We're not going to see a lot, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a struggle to hold this thing on, I think, because it really produces a lot of pressure. Get my hand out of the way. Yeah, it doesn't want to, uh, doesn't. So, yeah, you can kind of see that in the camera that waffly effect, and that's what's going on here. Okay, enough of that. I've seen these, these diaphragm, these high pressure diaphragm pumps used in, in chemistry labs to circulate chemicals and in manufacturing for similar purposes um, and in RO water filters that's one of the most common places to find them. Uh, I'm using them for a solar pump project uh, to pump relatively pure water to a water tank and so on. So uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, I got her back together. Well, I hope you found that useful in your understanding of water pumps.